fun. So this is gonna be a fun one. Um, Mark actually suggested this video and I was like, yes, that is a genius idea. And ever since that moment, I have been so, so <laughs> excited to film it. You will see from the title, I'm gonna recreate my 2010 favorites video um, because I am a grandma in YouTube terms. Uh, this year marks the 10th year that I have been on YouTube. I think the official anniversary is around September time because I think my first video was a Sephora haul because Mark and I had gone to Paris for my birthday, which was amazing. Um, and then that year I did a 2010 favorites and I have all of the products from that video out in front of me. I have searched far and wide for some of these, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think I found them all. And I'm gonna put them on my face and let you know my thoughts 10 years later. <laughs> hey everyone. So I know this is a little late, but today I'm gonna do a 2010 favorites. And I'm gonna keep it just down to makeup, otherwise this video is gonna be half an hour long, which is way too long. So I'm gonna do separate videos on hair care, nail polishes, brushes, and um, sort of like a body care, sort of moisturizers, tanning, that kind of thing as well. So yeah, that was me 10 years ago. This is me now. I was 21 when I filmed that video. I'm 30 now and uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> the hair, the lack of eyebrows. Um, I was so shy. Um, I was recording that video in my like uni room and I would only ever film if all of my housemates, I lived with three other girls, if the other three girls were out the house, that was the only time I would record. I wouldn't record if anyone was in the house, I was way too terrified. And also I was recording on like potato, as you can tell, and I didn't know how to edit at that time. So that's why I'm not putting it on my face because I didn't know how to cut videos. And basically I would just do like one continuous long clip. And if I effed up at the end, I would restart the whole thing and go back to the beginning. Um, so that was my 2010 favorites video. Things have, a lot has changed since then. Um, but then also some of these products actually haven't changed. And are still things that I use all these years later. Some of them I haven't used for yonks. Um, so let's kick it off with the Guerlain Lingerie de Po. Um, I was obviously the bougiest uni student. I don't know how the hell I was affording this on my salary at the time, which was coming from working in a bar and then my student loan. Um, I was spending it on Guerlain. But I really, really like this foundation. Um, I struggled to find the color match. I think they've since updated the shade range, which is great. Um, I was 02 and 03 then. And now they've got like 02N or 02W, 02C, like all different kind of undertones, which is great. So I ended up going for 03N. I haven't tried it, but let's put it on the brush. Let's see what happens. Okay, quite a good shade match. It still smells the same. I feel like that smell is very nostalgic, um, but at the time I was into quite a full coverage base, despite the fact that my skin was probably like the best it would ever look. And I really liked things quite matte. Um, you'll see later on in this video, I have a powder favorite. Um, so I was quite into like a matte finish with like a decent amount of powder. Also a foundation that made me look slightly like an Oompa Loompa. Um, which this foundation is kind of doing. So that was two pumps all over. Let me inspect. Um, oh, I have to say that foundation is actually really nice. It's quite a skin-like finish. It's quite like velvety and it's not super dewy. It's not super matte. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm not sure about the shade on me. Um, I feel like the undertone is just like a little bit off. I was just ordering this online. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't hate that 10 years later. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I would definitely say that's one to look into if you just want a base that looks like skin. It's just very like in the middle, not full coverage, but not sheer coverage, not matte, but also not super dewy. I okay, this video's got off to a good start. <laughs> the next favorite that I mentioned in that video was this from Bobbi Brown, and this was the Creamy Concealer in the shade Sand. Um, so I found this now in this handy little kit that also has the under eye setting powder, and I don't really feel like I ever use that, but I do remember using sand, and I think I just used to apply it with my fingers and kind of blend it in. Back when I was at uni, like, Bobbi Brown was the brand. The creamy concealer was, like, really having a moment. Um, everyone used the eyeliner. That was what we used to, like, save our pennies for. That and MAC were the brands I was, like, really obsessed with. Um, so I'm just gonna continue to blend this in with my finger. Um, I've always liked this concealer. I think it is a really, really lovely concealer. I think for me, I prefer now something that has a little bit more 
slip to it. This definitely has a little bit more grip to it. Um, when I've done friends makeups for their like wedding days, I've suggested this as a concealer because I think that it covers really nicely, but it does have quite a decent amount of longevity to it. It is quite a thick, like medium-ish full coverage concealer. So it's good for like a long wearing makeup. But for me day to day, I love like my Glossier, I love the RMS, but it's still a good product. I feel like this has stood the test of time. We have a little friend down here that is freshly picked. So I'm not sure we're gonna be able to do much to uh, cover that up. Give me one more second. <laughs> yeah, I've literally created a hole in my face. So we'll just ignore that. <laughs> then moving on to powder. And this is the one non mover in the routine I've got here. This is a product that I still have today. I did have to repurchase it in a uh, deeper shade. I picked it up in medium. I definitely just use light these days. Um, but back in the day I used medium or medium plus if I was really like going for it. Um, so yeah, I did pick this up as a new one, but I have still got light in my collection and I just think it is a brilliant, brilliant powder. It's just such a gloriously like sheer dewy finish powder, if that makes sense. Like I never feel like it looks too matte on the skin and I used to dust it all over. So that's what I'm doing today. <sighs> but this is the product that I would keep in my bag on a night out. I'd be like applying this in the toilet. So some girl was like being sick when I sat next to me. Like this is what I would like dust all over my friends, put all on myself, like no regard for hygiene. I'd had way too many Cherry VKs for that. And um, but yeah, this was like always in my bag. I would always be like topping up my powder because God forbid I lacked coverage and started to look shiny. <laughs> I feel like there's still a slight sheen to my face. Like you can still see a slight sheen going on there, but that obviously does add like quite a decent amount of like a tiny bit of coverage and then also just like evening everything out. But yeah, still a product that I wouldn't use as heavy handed as I used to, um, but I do still use it and really rate it still. Okay, so one product that was particularly tricky to find is the Bourjois Bronzing Powder, the one that smells like chocolate. Hashtag memories. Like if you were watching YouTube back in 2010, you've seen this product. This was like the bronzer that everyone was talking about. It was the bronze that I mentioned in my 2010 favorites. And I really like it. I feel like I definitely remember using one up like fully. And then it was a product that I had in my routine for years and years after that moment as well. And um, I just kind of ended up moving on to other things. And now I really like a cream bronzer back in the day. Like I was not about that cream life. Everything here is powder. Um, but Bourjois are like leaving the UK, I think. I'm sure I saw this online, um, which is kind of sad because their stuff is really gorgeous. Their lip products are really nice. Like this is still a brilliant bronzer. I feel like the one back in the day had like little bits of gold shimmer in. Oh yes, a very, very slight amount of gold shimmer. But yeah, now I'm just gonna do my bronzing thing with this. I'm quite surprised that this is one of only two drugstore products in the lineup here because in 2010, I was a student. Um, now I'm realizing, I'm like, why didn't I have any money for food? I'm like, oh, oh yeah, all the Mac and Dior and Guerlain. <laughs> Oh man. I mean, I still love makeup now. I always will. But back then I was a woman obsessed. Like I would actually queue outside Mac whenever they had a new collection coming. So um, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I feel like this is actually quite a sheer bronzer. Maybe that's why everyone loved it so much because it was very easy to kind of build up. It was very like beginner makeup-y. So I'm happy with where I've got the bronzer too. Um, I didn't use contour then. It wasn't really a thing back in 2010. So no contour in the lineup. The next thing was blush. Yes, I know. I used to wear blush and I used to wear quite a lot of it. And this was my favorite for like, I mean, I can't, I've got the stats somewhere, but I'm sure this was my favorite for a couple of years. It is the MAC powder blush. This is in the shade Melba. It's a really nice, peachy pink shade and I'm actually I'm actually really excited to use this I know I don't really do like powder blusher too much these days but I do remember this being a really gorgeous shade oh it's so nice 2010 me well done I feel like because I never wear blush and when I put it on I'm like I don't know where to put it but I'm just, I'm just blending that out with my bronzer brush but I really like this shade, I loved it then. And um, I think it just kind of peps you up, makes you look a bit more like youthful, alive, perky. I'm really feeling that. Like I am 100% holding on to this product after this video. Like I think it is really, really nice. But I do remember using a fair amount of blush. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more on just cause you know, we're trying to 
recreate the 2010 vibes here. I have no idea what I was applying it with. I mean, I owned the bare basics when it came to brushes at the time. I think we were all obsessed with the 109 MAC brush. It was like a small kind of round powder brush and we used it to like apply everything. <laughs> like Nasha Glow, like powder products. I think we used it to apply this as well, which is the next favorite, Dior Amber Diamond. Now this is a long, long discontinued product. They discontinued this years ago, but I still have it in my stash. I have this as part of my like collectible makeup stash that I just can't part ways with because this holds so many memories for me. This was one of my like first ever fancy schmancy makeup purchases. I remember buying it because Tanya Burr, Pixie Two Woo at the time, was obsessed with it. Like she would use this as eyeshadow and then she would use it as highlighter. Like highlighter was still a relatively new concept then. Um, so this powder was like one of the only ones on the market and everyone was like, ah, this is the holy grail. Like YouTube 2010, like there you go, this is it in a product. Um, I think today I'm gonna use a Charlotte Tilbury and this is the powder and sculpt brush to apply it, but I just used to dust it across and then apply on the tops of my cheeks. In my 2010 favorites video, I'm like, it's not glittery at all. And now I look at it and I'm like, yeah, no, it definitely is pretty glittery, especially when you think about the products that we have now on the market, like how finely milled and like buttery and undetectable they are on the skin. But this is like a relatively new concept to kind of take all the shine out of your face and then put it back in with a powder product. Um, it's definitely not coming out as strong as I remember it on the cheeks, um, but this product is very old, like it's at least 10 years old. That's kind of disgusting now I think about it. <laughs> you had to bring it down onto your apple as well. It's all about like getting that shine there. A little on the nose, a little on the chin. I mean, it's a cute product. I do think I prefer using a cream highlighter these days, but it still has left like a very, oh, look at that shoe. It's a makeup hall of fame classic. <laughs> so then to set that all in, I would use the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. Um, this is a product that is still very much like widely used today. Um, I don't tend to use setting sprays so much anymore. Um, I think because it's I'm not so bothered about the longevity of my makeup these days. Like I'm happy to do a touch up, like a thing is crease. I'm happy just to like use my fingers and blending stuff in. Um, but back then I'd put my makeup on in the morning, I'd go to uni through the day. Then I'd come back and put more makeup on to go out in the evening. So I guess I was a bit more concerned with how long it was actually gonna stay on my face for. And I mean, I used like quite a lot of powder back in the day. So it was quite nice to add a setting spray just to get a bit of juice back into the skin. So this isn't a product that I would really use now. Although I am quite happy to have this back in my stash because you can use it as a mixing medium to like turn eyeshadows into eyeliners. I know Katie Jane Hughes does it quite a lot. I sort of has it on hand as a little additional step that you can combine with other things. So happy to have it back in my life, um, but not sure I would use it in this way. That is a strong spray. Woo, just waiting for that to dry. Oh my word, look, doing this, bringing me back. That has actually dried down like quite quickly. So hopefully it's doing its thing and locking stuff in. Um, let's have a quick chat about eyebrows. Um, so my eyebrows were non-existent in 2010. I had never had a professional look at them at that point. Um, I had massive eyebrows as a child. So of course, from like the mid 2000s, I kind of, I cut them, I plucked them. I like took them all out. So we were at a very, um, it was a thin eyebrow phase for a lot of people, like you two were there, like I feel you, I had nothing going on in the brow department. Um, and I think a couple of years later, I discovered MAC Espresso, which I just adored as like an eyebrow in filler. Um, so that was kind of where the makeup world was at at that time. It was all like very thin eyebrows, not really doing anything with them. But I did actually mention a brow gel, which surprised me. Um, it was an MUA clear brow gel. I've looked for it online. I don't think that MUA exists anymore. I couldn't find this brow gel. I think it was one pound from Superdrug. It was an absolute bargain. And I just used it to kind of pin what few brow hairs I did have into place. And um, so I'm just gonna use my brow gel at the moment, the Blink Brow Bar Clear Brow Gloss, and I'm just gonna pin them down. Um, but it's just kind of interesting that, yeah, I didn't really do anything with my brows then. Like brows weren't really a part of the makeup culture. It was all about eyeshadow really, and like base, that's more where people were focusing. So it's a funny old thing, taking a little walk down makeup memory lane. Before we get on to eyeshadow, we need to talk about 
eyeshadow primer. Now this one really, really tickled me. Um, there wasn't really much available in the market in terms of eyeshadow primers. So everybody used the Urban Decay Primer Potion. This is the original one. But back in the day, it was in this like genie style plastic bottle that was like full of all these nooks and crannies that you couldn't get the doe foot into. So basically you couldn't get all your product out. So there were actually videos on YouTube of people like sawing it in half, like showing you how to cut it in half with a kitchen knife so that you could scrape out all your product. And I remember doing that. Like I remember sawing it in half, like scraping out all the product. So it's brilliant that they listen to customer feedback and they now do it in a squeezy tube, which is so much better. But I haven't used this product for years. Like I now use the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof eyeshadow base, which I think is amazing. So I'm quite intrigued to use this again and like see if it's how I remember. Like I remember really liking it. And um, I think I ended up using the NARS in the end just because I felt like this was a little bit thick. Um, so let's see. Oh, I'll zoom you in. Zoom. I'm having so much fun. This is brilliant, 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 brilliant. Right, okay. Okay, not too much comes out on the doe foot. Maybe I should give it a little pump. Okay. Oh yeah, see this was more of like a beige sort of color. It feels very silicone-y, like very silky. Whereas I feel like the NARS gives you a little bit more tackiness. Okay, that's not as like thick and claggy as I remember. Like I remember it being quite thick. I'd say my eyelids feel yeah, they feel all right. They feel a little bit silicone-y. Like I'm not crazy about that feeling on my face, but maybe just for my eyelids, like we could let it go. I don't think this will be replacing my NARS anytime soon, um, but like, okay, we're, we're cool with it. Now I've got my mirror a little bit closer up. I just went in with some more concealer on what is going on on my chin. But let's talk about a makeup product that I'm very, very fond of. And I just, I just like get the warm fuzzy feelings when I think about it. MAC. All That Glitters eyeshadow. Um, this was like the only eyeshadow that I wore for probably about four years. Um, I definitely, definitely use this all the way up to the pan. And then I just don't think I repurchased it. I feel like I went on to like a new eyeshadow phase of my life. Like this is very peachy, champagne-y, metallic. And then I kind of moved more into like a matte neutral brown. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really struggled to find this. I have a feeling that it's been discontinued and there were some reviews on Makeup Alley that suggested that was the case. So I ended up having to buy this off of eBay, uh, which isn't something that I would recommend doing with makeup, um, but it looks fine, I hope. It looks as I remember it. So it wasn't the easiest one to get hold of, but let's see how it works on the lids. I mean, back when I first started wearing makeup, I didn't really wear eyeshadow at all. Like wearing eyeshadow for me was like very much a night out thing. Um, but it's strange, I feel like as you get older, I don't know, like I feel like eyeshadow becomes a little bit more flattering and now it's something that I like pretty much always wear. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna turn down the exposure, so hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Ha <laughs> ha! Peachy champagne goodness. And of course, I applied it with a MAC 217 because that was like the only decent blending brush that was available back then. Oh, it's kind of like a little bit warmer and like peachier than I remember. <laughs> if this is legit, who knows? Oh, I kind of like it. Yeah, I feel like that is like, a has a little bit more to it than I remember. Like I remember it being a little bit like pinky and kind of nothing key on the lids. Um, but yeah, I feel, oh, so metallic. <laughs> but I quite like it still. Um, so yeah, it's a shame if they have discontinued it because I feel like it was a real fan favorite. I feel like there was a lot of people who this was just like their everyday one wash kind of lid shade. So I still really like that. Um, it's it's kind of a bit different for me. Like I do tend to just go for more deeper matte shades. Like I would feel way more comfortable wearing something like this on the crease. Um, but I don't know, I still quite like it. The next favorite is something that I haven't worn in years and I feel very, very nervous about this part of the video, but it's the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Gel Eyeliner in the shade Black Ink. This was the eyeliner. Like if you were into wearing black liner, this was the eyeliner you were wearing in 2010. I remember my housemate like going out and putting some gift vouchers towards one of these and I was like, damn it, I need to do the same. Um, and I remember going out and buying it and like we just, we loved like doing our little kind of cat eye flick, putting on like one or two pairs of false eyelashes for a night out. So this wasn't a like everyday thing for me, but if I was on a night out, this is what I would go for. And yeah, if I was wearing an eyeliner in 2010, it was this. Because I don't wear gel eyeliners, I actually had to pick up a brush to apply it with. This is the Ultra Precise Eyeliner 
um, brush from Blue Brown. I don't remember what brush I used with it back in the day, um, but I can pretty much guarantee that it wouldn't have been this. It would have been like the Boots or Superdrug equivalent, I'm sure. Um, but I used to go right in to the lash line and come all the way out and then do like a little tiny baby flick. So let's see what I can do. So um, yeah, this definitely isn't how I used to do my uh, wing liner back in 2010. But I basically did that thing, you know, like with the meme and it's like you do one side and then you do the other side and then you do the other side and you end up with just like eyeliner up to your eyebrows. That's basically what happened here. Um, so we're just gonna pretend that the wing is a lot smaller than what I currently have going on here. Cause I definitely just used to do like a little tiny boop, baby, like a little baby flick. Um, I would say this is a really hard product to use. Um, I don't know why we all went for this when like I hadn't really worn like winged liner before. I was a real beginner. I find a pen, like a fluid pen, so much easier. And I feel like it's a real faff to have to keep going back into the product. The brush is really nice. I feel like the brush you get a great sort of shape with. Um, but yeah, actually as a product, this is not something that I would like use or recommend. Um, I personally prefer a liquid pen for the like one day every two years that I do a winged eyeliner look. <laughs> Let's have a talk about mascara because I feel like this product sort of sparked the idea for this video. And it is the L'Oreal Telescopic waterproof mascara. I picked this up in my Chicago like US beauty haul. I'll put that video up there up in the corner for you um, because it's finally available back in the US again. We can't currently get this in the UK, but this was my favorite mascara for like five, six years before they discontinued it. And I've thought about it every day since. Um, so I was so happy to get my hands back on it. But you know what? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. And I, I don't know what it is. I feel like it makes my lashes really stringy and spidery. And it's just not how I remember it. So whether I just have rose tinted glasses and it was always like that, and that's just how I liked my lashes back then, I'm not sure. Or have they changed the brush? Have they changed the formula? That's probably more likely. And it's just not the same as it used to be. It's a very long, skinny plastic brush. Um, whereas these days I go for something like a bit bushier, like more like natural bristles. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan and I'm really sad. I was so excited. I bought two bloody tubes of this stuff, but yeah, not crazy about it. Is it going to do that thing right now? It looks really good, uh, which would be really annoying. Come on, don't, don't show me up here. Um, I feel like you can't really get a good look at a mascara when you've got such an intense wing on because it's kind of hiding what it's doing at the root of the lash. But yeah, I am not a fan. So sad times people, L'Oreal Telescopic, I need to just get it out of my head. So I feel like up until this point, um, this is a makeup that I would like wear and I feel quite comfortable in. Like I feel like maybe the highlight is a little bit intense, like maybe not as big like wings with the liner. But as I mentioned, that was a mistake on my end, not actually how I wore it in 2010. There's like a couple of duds. I wouldn't recommend this. I'm not sure I would wear the Bobbi Brown creamy concealer anymore. Like there's some things here that I'm like not crazy about, but I feel like here is here is where 2010 really shows itself. Not with the lip balm. Um, the lip balm favorite for 2010 was the Burt's Bees Beeswax Lip Balm. A great lip balm. I'm just gonna throw a little bit on now. It's really nice, still a great product. Nice and minty and kind of like a matte lip balm. A really good just like matte lip balm if you don't want it like you have anything on your lips. Mark really likes this, it's great. But the lipstick shade of 2010 was for me, MAC lipstick in cream cup. Oh yes, look at that bright, mm, like bubble gummy pink. Um, I'm quite grateful to my past self that it wasn't creme de nude or myth. Um, or even Hue, like Hue, I think was a favorite of the year after. And I wore that down into a tiny little nub. And that was definitely a much more beigey, paler version of Cream Cup. Um, I also really loved Patisserie back in the day. That was a favorite. Um, Peach Stock, enjoyed that as well. Um, but yeah, my favorite of the year was this one. Um, I have not it's brand new. It, oh, a brand new lipstick always looks so good. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the deed now. We're ready for this. Oh, and I would wear it really full on as well. So I, I didn't wear it as I wear lipsticks now, kind of like put on, like lightly patted in. I went like full on, full coverage. So wish me luck. I mean, it's not terrible. I just feel like my own natural lip color is quite rosy and like a deep pink. So when you put something so cool over the top of it, it looks a bit jarring. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's not Saint Germain. Was it Saint Germain that everyone wore that was like a bright, 
like really intense like candy floss pink um what was the other one there was like a lavender was it lavender wit like actually a lavender lipstick i feel like it could be more cool toned um so i should be grateful for this so not something that i would personally wear these days or feel like comfortable wearing but not also not terrible like it it worked for the time it wasn't putting Rimmel hide the blemish on your lips, which I did do in previous years, uh, thankfully pre-YouTube. Um, so I'm not angry at it. I'm not also not wild about it, but yeah, I feel like this, this really does make the look You're like, oh yeah, 2010. Um, but then over the top of that, I would use the Clarins um, Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector. And again, that is something that I just wouldn't do now, like doing a lipstick with a lip gloss over the top. I just, I just couldn't be faffed. I would either do one or the other. Um, so I'm just gonna squeeze this out. I'm actually gonna put it on my finger so I don't end up like getting cream cup all over the applicator here and just dabbing that on top because as if that is not shiny enough, we need more shine. The Clarins lip gloss is actually really nice. It's still a favorite of mine now. It's my mum's favorite lip product, hands down. A gorgeous like balmy gloss, which I think I was first introduced through Sam and Nick, Pixie Woo. I feel like they used it, saw them use it, had to buy one. Um, so yes, there you go, that completes the 2010 makeup favorites video slash look now on my face. Um, I'm pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pleasantly surprised. There's a lot of products here that I like, would still use, would still recommend. And um, yeah, the kind of eyes and lips which I thought would be the issues here, like aren't as terrible as I thought. That was a very enjoyable walk down makeup memory lane. Like, please let me know any of your like old school makeup favorites in the comments down below. Were there any of these products that you had? Um, did this like conjure up some fond memories for you? Let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon with a brand new video. Bye.